two, one. Okay, so today we're gonna to learn how to lead rope solo. Um, huge disclaimer, this is super dangerous. Do not attempt this unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, it makes everything about three letter grades harder. Um, so you definitely wanna start beneath your grade, well beneath your grade. Learn the system well, make a bunch of mistakes, and then you can come back and try harder stuff later. Um, I'm usually by a 13 climber, and the hardest I can do on lead rope solo is a 12A. So that gives you an idea of how much it reduces you. So, a um, couple of things that you'll need. Um, first of all is, uh, I use a silent partner. There's a few other devices that will work. Um, from my understanding, a silent partner is the best thing on the market. Uh, they don't make them anymore, they're super hard to find, but you can get them for way over the original retail price on eBay. I think they're like up to $350, $400 now. Retail, they're about $250. So, um, getting started, what you're gonna do is you wanna tie a big figure eight in the end of your line. Well, first of all, you wanna flake out your line because I've got people here today, but normally if you're a leader up solo, you're by yourself. And if you get a snag in your line while you're up there, you're gonna be in bad trouble if the rope doesn't follow you up. Um, you can also put the rope in a bag. Um, I don't do that, I just, I just flake it out at the base of the climb. So, uh, I've already got the rope flaked out and pretty. Um, now I'm just gonna tie a big figure eight in this guy. And you can tie whatever backup knots you want. Um, but, you know, figure eights are super awesome and redundant, so I'm not going to redo anything. I think we're gonna go do animal magnetism real quick. Maybe eventually. Okay. Yeah. So. Your first piece is gonna be your lowest, um, your lowest bolt. Or you can pick a you can pick an anchor on the ground. However, if you do that, you need to make sure that the the rope angle to the first first bolt isn't too steep, so it doesn't bend, it doesn't pull out on the bolt too much. Because bolts are designed to be pulled down on, not out. Um, they are deliberately bolt they're deliberately drilled down like this, so that they they can take a lot of force in a downward direction, but start pulling out on they're weaker. So as long as you can climb that hard, you're safer just clipping a locker to your first uh, first uh, bolt. So there's our first bolt, and then we're going to attach the silent partner. To attach the silent partner, simply open it up, tie a clove hitch. If you don't know how to tie a clove hitch, you shouldn't be rope soloing in the first place, so I'm not going to teach you that. So the important part here is that the clove hitch, the two ends have to come out the tops like this. See that? So you've got your connection point there, and this should run uh, clean. The, the clove hitch will naturally fall into these two grooves in the silent partner. And how this works is it has a centrifugal lock. So if it spins anything there's a certain speed, I don't remember what it is, but if it spins too fast, it will lock. And it will go either direction, so it doesn't matter how you mount it on your harness, as long as it's the cloak is just tied directly, you're fine. So, um, the silent partner has a nice big opening here. The point behind that is, is that you can put two carabiners through it, because this is gonna take a dynamic fall. If it gets cross-loaded, you might be in a bad situation. So. You want to put two locking carabiners. I, I like to use small ones um, because it keeps it closer to your harness. So just go ahead and lock those guys like so. All right. Now we have to deal with rope weight issues. Um, so the silent partner will feed beautifully in either direction. However, if it gets too much weight on it, it stops working very well. The clove hitch starts to bind 
and it won't move as easily. So the rule of thumb that I got from Rock Exotica's uh, website is that if there's more than 50 feet of rope weight on the silent partner, it will start to fail, start to re work weirdly. So on the other side, on the slack end of things, you wanna have some kind of one directional um, pulley. So a lot of people use a, a micro traction. Um, I'm using a protraction, which has a few advantages, but either one works fine. So the idea here is that the pulley will keep this slack loop and you can feed this through easily. Now, if the silent partner for some reason, which is very unlikely, but if it did fail, um, the, 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 the protraction wouldn't help you because this is just gonna feed really fast. It's not gonna stop the, the protraction from, the, the silent partner from letting you fall all the way to the ground. So your backup system are slip knots. So to tie the slip knots, slip knots are directional. Um, it's a little bit hard to explain. Basically, you want it, you want it so that if you pull on the slack end that goes down to the ground, you want that to make the slip knot pop out. The way to do that is to tie a loop like that, and then just put this guy, the side that you want to pop, to pull and pop it out, over here, and then just tighten like that. So, as I'm climbing. I'll be feeding slack through into my system here, and then it'll reach, it'll reach the uh, the protraction, the microtraction, whatever you've got there, and that will stop it. And then you want to be able to pull downward on the rest of your slack, and you can pop that as you're climbing. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. If you fully trust your silent partner, you don't have to have slip knots, but especially initially, I definitely recommend doing it. And we're back. So over we're gone, I went ahead and uh, tied some slip knots into my rope um, just so I can demonstrate this with extra super safety. A lot of times I don't actually use slip knots because it's a lot easier not to, but leave that to you. A um, few other things you're going to want, obviously you're going to want draws. If you're doing track climbing, which is totally fine, that's another level above this. You need to make sure the anchors are all directional and everything. Sport climbing is a lot simpler just because you just clip a bolt and it's done. So I definitely recommend starting with sport climbing. But you're also, I find these things to be super helpful. Um, so I use these for a couple of reasons. Um, so your first your first anchor, your, your, your bottom anchor, that's gonna support you as you climb up, as you feed the rope up the wall, kind of like, you're kind of laying the rope on the wall. Your first piece, your first anchor is gonna be your, your carabiner, your locking carabiner on the first draw. Um, I like to put the second bolt with uh, one of these guys. Um, so what I do is I, uh, I lock this onto the bolt and then I clove hitch the rope onto this side and then I lock that down too. When you clove hitch a rope onto a carabiner, it can pull the rope in funny directions and it also can open the gate because the, the rope is actually wrapping around. And so if it, if it happens just right, I've had it rip the whole draw off the bolt. It wasn't the one I was using until for life support. It was actually lower down, but it didn't make me feel very happy inside. So I like to use lockers. Whenever, whenever I'm gonna do clove hitches on the bolts, I use lockers and that way I can be sure that I won't get ripped off. Um, so two is sufficient. Um, so you've got first bolt, second bolt, and then as you're going up, at some point about halfway up the climb, you're gonna need to clove hitch the rope again to another bolt about halfway up or so. Because if you don't, you're gonna have too much rope weight on the silent partner. And again, for the same reasons, the other slack will make the silent partner fail. The rope weight from the climbing end of the rope will also make it fail. So that clove hitch is really there just to hold the rope weight um, so you can continue climbing without having the rope weight on you. One word of caution in that, um, if you have the, if you, if you have the clove hitch in there, you've basically reduced the amount of rope in your system 
um, so that now all the, the, all the rope in your system is between you and your last clove hitch. There are some ways you can ameliorate that. If you, if you extend these guys, um, they will move quite a bit. And so if you fall, it won't get caught on that piece. I know this is not very, not very easy to understand, but yeah. Send me a message if you have more questions, you probably will. Um, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. I also live in Boulder, so if you want to come climb sometime, I'll pick you up. We're at uh, Middle Animal World, and this is uh, this is a 11 AB we're about to do. I can't remember the name, but it's pretty sweet little climb. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take off now, and. You're not going to be able to see me that well, but I'm going to have uh, my friend Meg here film it and uh, you can get what you can from it. Let me see how it goes. All right. Can you follow me to the this first big platform here? Sure. You can pause it. Here we go. So I recommend trying to find climbs that are uh, definitely pretty easy at first so you can get that first piece clipped in um, before anything before you fall so I've got a nice firm stance here I'm gonna go ahead and clip my first piece here and I'm gonna lock that down for sure nice and tight now you've got the slack after the silent partner you want to just pull a big loop through there. Um, now, potentially, if the silent partner failed, you can fall the distance. You can fall the distance to your next nut. Um, this is not technically safe right now, but I'm not worried. So I'm gonna keep going. So first piece is in. I'm gonna go ahead and climb the next piece, and my silent partner is gonna feed right after me. Okay, second piece. I'm gonna take one of my locking alpines. I'm gonna put it on the draw, lock it in, and then I'm gonna take my rope and I'm gonna clip that to the draw as normal. Um, now this one has to get clove hitched. Right now I'm in I'm in no hands-free environment, but if I wasn't, if I had to hang on with one hand, you can still tie a clove hitch. You reach thumb down behind the rope and then pull it out, twist, and then re-clip like so. I'm sure you can find better videos online for how, actually how to do that better. But it is possible to tie a one-handed clove hitch. And for rope soloing, it's going to be absolutely essential. So you're going to want to learn how to do that. Okay, so we've got our two-point anchor in now. Um, I'm totally safe. Uh, my backup is redundant. Everything is copacetic. I'm going to start climbing for real.
smile real pretty for the camera. <laughs> Okay, so this probe is probably a robot now. I'm gonna go ahead and put my second low pitch piece in. So let's see if I can put that.
Okay, so as you can see, I've got, I'm still using my bottom anchor. It's going through the anchor to the top, and I'm on a single line. I'm using a green grid, which is nice because it's hands-free. I know all you trolls out there are going to say, no, green grids aren't hands-free. That's fine. Keep your hands on the brake line and use a pressic. Whatever you want to do, I trust my green grid. So, uh, to clean the last two pieces, what I do is I just unclip the second, second piece, and I clip it to my harness like that, and I lock it in. So now you've got a glove on a locker, and basically that's going to be your point where it's going to take the weight now, and then the, the bottom... I have a snag, one second. So you see how that that second piece is now holding all the weight and the first piece becomes slack. So I can just hop on over to it. Or if it's overhanging, you can actually use the rope to pull you back to it. So you can totally clean overhanging walls, but climbing overhanging walls while rope soloing is really hard. So good luck with that. And voila. Hope you learned something. Um, comment, don't be mean, and uh, don't die. Good luck.